Am I on? You're on. So we're on the mic. So you won't hear this thing on. You won't That's hear yourself, right. but uh, we're on the mic. That's but uh, it's good to good to lay eyes on you again, Shad. Oh, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to take you in visually, man. Shad Wicker, ladies and gentlemen. Shad, um, it almost sounds facetious the way you said that to me, though. What do you mean? To take me on visually. To take you in visually. Yeah. No, it's just I, th- I think it's weird. To Is that re- a weird way of saying you think I'm hot or something? Or oh what? no, I definitely think you're hot. Yeah, right. But I was just trying to dance around it for a bit before we got right no, into I'm the depth more, of I'm it. I'm a straight shooter. You're like, yeah, you're, you're very present. You're yeah. like, can we address what you just said? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Hey, this is the great man. This is how he <laughs> operates. Um, it's good to take you in visually. I'll double down with it. Um, we've met once before gigging together, but uh, never really got to get to know you deeply. So right. I'm hoping over this 20-minute chat, we'll know everything there is to know. I'm an open book. Good. I'm going to have a gander. <laughs> um, you're based in Brisbane. Yes. Correct. And But take me back earlier than that, Shad. Um, what's your heritage, first of all? What's your, where's the origin story for the parents? And what's, what's this lovely caramel blend I'm seeing? Um, what do you reckon? Oh, that's a dangerous <laughs> game, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, Give it a go. I, have I, a crack. I, I'd like to say that there is, uh, there's Caucasian influence. Right. And then there's just some lovely exotic sort of maybe Middle Eastern, uh, Middle Eastern European, right. possibly. I mean, I've just gone Middle Eastern or European just okay. in the one sentence. But that's where I'm going to stick to and I'm going to say that. Okay. Are you I, okay? Am, am you're a bit I, nervous? Or I'm scared, right? dude. You don't want to name a country? You just want no, to No, I don't want to name a country. No, I just want to go just, just continents. Um, I'm uh, Irish Scottish heritage. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> Perfect, dude. <laughs> I can you imagine. There's the yeah. Caucasian. Now continue on, and heavy, then heavy Irish Scottish. Uh, and then Lebanon. No, I, my dad's Pakistani. Yep. Uh, my mum is like yeah, like white Australian, Caucasian Australian. Um, my I'm kind of I'm a real mixed bag. So it's like dad's Pakistani, so that's my heritage. My mum's white Australian. But she grew up in the Pacific Islands in oh. Tonga, which is where I was born. So yeah, I was, you are. I was born in Vavatu. Uh, spent like a couple of years there, moved to Australia, and then I kind of grew up around uh, Tongan families and stuff for a bit. And then, um, yeah, regional Australia as well, which, yeah, explains my accent, I guess. My God. So, yeah. had like, just an er- from early on, I- I'm just sort of projecting into this, but like, just trying to figure out what you are and how to be. Yeah. You're in Tonga, Pakistani dad, Australian mum, then you're in regional Australia. I mean, yeah. like, how many hats did you have to wear in the early childhood as, as young Shad? Uh, oh, I don't know. Like, I, I, you don't really think about it when you're a kid, I don't think. Right. Much. Just, Everyone in my family is white, though. Like, because my dad yeah. wasn't around. So I just grew around. I just grew up with the only one that didn't have to really put much sunscreen on was kind of the <laughs> vibe growing up, I guess. You know what I mean? Everyone else was getting burned, and I'm just like. You're just more efficient at the beach. Yeah, That's the only difference between Had you. Had a little head wobble. That was about it. <laughs> Having a great time. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic And just passionate about the cricket You couldn't understand yeah, why Yeah, I didn't know but why But I was obsessed <laughs> with spin bowling It was fantastic <laughs> But No, I don't Like uh, I Yeah, I don't know I've just never really been asked that We've got like, growing up Wearing different hats Not really I think that uh, I was a bit of a wuss Like when I was growing up Like Just wanted to fit in So I guess I'd yeah. just go with Whatever would you know stop people from picking on me? Maybe I guess. And that's and, the, and that's the low hanging fruit. But do you think? I mean, did you become funny just to blend in and not be a target? Shad, is that? No. Sort of how you got the bullies off your back. But yeah. where was the origins for you in terms of comedy, man? Like, was it in the family? No, <laughs> not at all. Don't I, shade um, at mum. She's not funny. No, nah, mum's not funny. My dad thinks he is, but like I, I think I, I wanted to. So I got into comedy through. I was doing radio for a few years before I did stand-up. Oh, right. So, like, I, I really enjoyed radio. Um, like, growing up, I used to listen to, like, the... Uh, what was it called? The Big Kahuna's Fat 30, I think the show was called. And because uh, I, I always kind of lived separate from the family in my teenage years and stuff. I was very independent. I was an only child with my mum and my dad. Like, I had, like, half-brothers and they were older, but that was about it. Half-brothers and sisters. But um, I kind of got into radio... I had a mate of mine, Mitch Garling. He's a comic in New South Wales. I went to school with him and like we had mates and stuff. We kind of did a little bit of community radio together. And that was where I kind of got a taste of what comedy was like. Yes. Helping him organise some gigs. And then when I went into radio in Darwin, I got cornered by Amy Hetherington, a oh, wow. great comedian in Northern Territory. Uh, cornered me on a breakfast radio show I was on and made me promise that I'd try stand-up. So I did an open mic. What year was this? That, that would have been ages ago. I think that would have been like maybe 2015, maybe. Yeah, okay. And I did like a couple of gigs. And then I ended up getting a radio job in Cairns. 
moved to Cairns. I didn't do radio. I didn't do stand up for probably like a fair few years after that. I don't really count Darwin as my start necessarily because it yeah. was kind of like you know the scene then was I like it felt like my memory of it was like there was probably ten people doing it. Right. You know, and you I were, only did to- it. And you were top 10. <laughs> no, no, mate. I fuck, I mate was my, first, my first gig was at a place called uh, Bogart's Bar or something in Parap. And it was to a mate of mine, uh, two other people that were just there having a beer. And then an 18th birthday came in and had dinner. <laughs> like it was grim dude it was so five bad five minutes no because the thing is it went for eight minutes because you think it's five yeah sure and it's just you blabbing on for fucking ages so you're good. like oh, i only wrote two pages it's only five minutes like nah mate you're waffling on that's great <laughs> but, and was yeah. that enough though in these early before you go on to radio in darwin was was it that story of you know you got got a bit of the bug and you're like i gotta come back and do this uh i think I think I really liked, uh, you, like radio. You like certain, you get in trouble for certain things, or you know, there's a limit to what you can kind of say. And part of the fun's trying to work, I guess, between all that. But I, I did enjoy just being able to be like, you know, probably probably back then because I was quite younger, just being able to say fuck shit and cunt, I guess, like <laughs> on stage about how you actually feel and rip on things that you're probably not necessarily allowed to rip on in radio. Yeah, I moved to Cairns and I didn't really think much about it because i was so like in the idea of radio i'm like oh i'm gonna get this like i'm gonna get a sick radio job and i'm gonna like move up and stuff but then i kind of i still really wanted to do stand up in some form i was told there was a scene there but it wasn't when i moved there oh really you were you were catfished by yeah by the radio station (laughs) which (laughs) is which is the story of every radio announcers yeah 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 (laughs) step into radio but yeah i didn't do it for a couple of years until i um Met my mate Peter James and a couple other comedians or like wannabe comedians in Cairns and then we decided to start a little scene there and then that kind of took off and that's when it all came And that's going. where, so that's where you consider you your start. Yeah, because then I was gigging like every, like a few times every month. Yeah. You know, and uh, I took to hosting straight away because I was just kind of radio. You're just used to being able to talk through any Hold court. situation, you know. What I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's like anything can happen, you're fine with just chatting. Yeah. So and what year was this to catch fine. us up? Was this like 2018 or so, 2019? Uh, I was in Cairns for four years. So, yeah, probably around, I think I've, like someone said to me, I don't know how long we've been doing it. I think it's like, I think I'm in that eighth year now, seventh year or something. Seven or yeah, eighth great. year. So, I think it would have been, yeah, like 17 or 18. Yeah, sweet, man. I reckon, yeah. And what was it? So, you, you meet these mates, you're sort of creating your own scene, so to speak, and, and, and getting, the, getting the gigs going. What was the goal for you at that point? You, were you still doing radio? Yeah, I was doing radio the whole time. Yeah. Brecky Radio, do a, do a gig. Pete started running like a Monday night show, which would make my Tuesday mornings a fucking nightmare because you're just like doing a gig and then you're having a few drinks and the next thing you know, it's 11.30 and you've got to be four. up four. But yeah, it was both at the same time, which was cool. I don't think there was really a goal like to start with. It was just fun. And then I think what it became after a while was kind of like, oh, you know, looking at what, well, like looking at like what Husey was doing at the time, and he's like, you have a brekkie radio, well, you have an, a drive radio show, and then you get to do stand up. And that's, your, that's the two things you do. And for me, I was like, you're just getting paid to talk shit in radio. And it's like, imagine if you get paid for talking shit, and then your other job is to get paid for talking shit. Yes. I was like, this is fantastic. Like, just, oh. just talking for money. Just doubling it down. Yeah. And like, I could do that underwater. So I was like, this would be, that's the, that kind of became an idea of, oh, that could pretty, that could be a good little niche you could kind of, move into eventually was doing both at the same time yeah and so was there any thought for the, f- the future trajectory was it sort of like all right so we're here now we're gigging i'm getting i've got a good 10 minutes got a good 15 minutes maybe i should go to sydney maybe i should go to melbourne when did those thoughts start to come into the play um i feel it's funny when you're like in cans because we started there and there was no there was no bar to compare to so you were kind of just like i guess this is comedy you know what I mean? Yeah, okay, great. Like, there wasn't like, you know, when you go to a scene or something and you kind of feel the You know hierarchy. how you can feel when you go somewhere? The same way, like, places have accents, you can kind of feel like a comedy town has a kind of, almost like a through line of style sometimes. Yes. Like, you can go to, you can go to places like, and this, I'm not teasing places at all, because, like, some of the best comics are all over, but, like, you can go to Melbourne and there's kind of like a vibe of, a sound or an inflection you can kind of hear through a lot of gigs. <laughs> yeah. And you go to Sydney, it's the same. And you can go to like Brisbane, it's the same. Like you've got, 
a thing. I think in Cairns there wasn't really one and there was like a ragtag group of people just trying to do it, you know. Right. You'd have people up there saying the most fucking horrific things that like years in now I'm like, oh, my God, I'm glad no one was filming that shit. Like yeah, <laughs> it's some yeah, of the yeah, worst yeah. things being said on stage because you're learning. So you kind of just grow however you can. Yes. I think the thoughts of going somewhere else and doing more probably came after – um, I was like running a, a room with a, a per, like a then mate at the time, and and we were um, kind of making a little bit of money, like money month to month. So then I kind of pulled that cash together and was like, uh, I went to the Edinburgh Fringe one year. I, th I think it was then. It might have been then, or whatever. I, I got wind of like fringe festivals and what they were about. This is how much of a novice I was. Like I didn't know any real like anything about stand up that much, really. Like just you know, Chappelle and like all that, like American yeah, yeah. stuff. Uh, but I was like, oh, this fringe festival is like pretty sick. We should go down there. So I kind of bankrolled seven cans over mic because we did a lineup show um, for like a week and a half or something um, at the German club in Adelaide. It was like me, Pete, a bunch of others. And uh, I think it was after that, it was kind of like, oh, people like travel around and do this. Yes. And you, I was like, this is pretty sick. Like you could do that. And that's like something you could possibly do. So then I think when I got back, I was like, I want to travel more. And that's when I tried to convince the radio station to like, let me do the show from a studio down in Sydney so I can just do an open mic. You know what I mean? Like, yes. And then that was probably where it started to roll more to be like, oh, I want to kind of do this a bit more than just every fortnight or whatever. In so it started camps. to shift. That's when you sort of felt that it started to shift towards, oh, maybe comedy is the thing that, I, that I'm doing. Not the thing that I'm doing. I was still attached to radio. Are you still attached to radio today? No. <laughs> when did that end? Probably when I got fired. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon that's turned probably up, when, turned actually. Turned up on four and a half hours uh, sleep and then <laughs> no. thought, I, forgot, I thought I was at an open mic. Sorry. <laughs> I was just riffing this new thing on the, uh, on the no. Nova. Yeah, no. Like, I think, um, yeah, like 2019 was probably where it, I'd still do it, but like not nowhere near... It'd just be a quick buck or something now. Well, you've got such autonomy with, with stand-up comedy and, and all yeah. the things that you're doing now. Do you find it not very tempting to go back to being quite restricted? Uh, yeah. Also, I just think that, like, I was, <laughs> I was fired. I've, I've told this story a lot, I guess. But, like, I, I was fired in 2019 for calling Scott Morrison a cunt. So like, oh, right. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, I mean, I was in a photo. I didn't say, like, I was, I was in a photo with him. And I was holding a coffee mug that had the word cunt written on it. And he shared that photo on all of his social media, not knowing that <laughs> that was on it. And uh, Surely his publisher should have been fired, well, that's not what you. My, that is also my view. <laughs> yeah, well, that's not your but fault. The timing was crazy because I'd just been given a promotion to move to Triple M on the Central Coast. So it was like a bit of a dream radio job, big coin. Um, and... I did the cunt mug thing happened on a Tuesday and then I left Cairns to go to my new job on the Thursday and then I was fired halfway down the coastline of Queensland uh, in Mackay when they called me in for a meeting. So then I was like left in Mackay from going from being like, oh, I'm going to move to the wow. Centre Coast, I'm going to start. And I'm, my goal then was like, I'll, I'll do stand up in Sydney. I've got some mates there and... I'll I can start see kind it of all. Growing. I can see it all. Yeah, I was like, this could kind of be a cool way of doing it. But then, yeah, that kind of all fell apart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, around 2019. Shane, <coughs> you're the Australian Shane Gillis. Cancelled uh, right before Saturday Night Live, and then <laughs> you're, on the pro you're on the process of jettisoning onto greater fucking pastures, man. I'd I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love dude, to be that. Dude. I'd love that, but <laughs> no. <laughs> I wish. I wish I had that kind of level of success. It was actually a lot of fucking shit kicking for a while. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but well, I mean, I, I don't want to harp on it about it too much, man. But I mean, at that point, like emotionally, sort of what's gone through your head? Like, because you had all these plans and everything set up for you and, and you think it's going to go one way and then it goes another. And what were you left with in terms of with, with comedy? Like, these plans have fallen apart. What are you going to do now? What, do you remember at that time what you were thinking? I remember I... Well, I was obviously Devo and stuff, but I, I ended up driving. The plan was, the original plan was to stay in Brisbane for a night with my mate that lived there and like have a good weekend and then drive down to start the new job. So I still did that and went down to the, uh, to Brizzy, enjoyed my weekend, kind of dodged media calls and stuff at the time. But I kind of got to a point, I was probably giving the wrong advice around the time, but also probably the same advice because I'm kind of here, but like, 
uh, I didn't kind of double down on it or push back on it. I just kind of more concerned about the other people in my life, family, parents, girlfriend at the time. Oh, I should probably like figure something out. But I remember I went and did a gig because I was like, oh, well, I guess I can just do stand up. And I, I went and did a gig at um, the Cecil in on the Gold Coast, which is um, it's this gig in a pub, pretty rough. And there's like a tram line right around that, like it's on a corner and the tram goes around it. And if it's really hot, they have the windows open. So you just hear the tram like, like just squealing as it goes across. So fucked. And uh, I went and did that gig. And I remember, I remember Dilruk Jaisinger was on the lineup. And I got a message from them. They're like, hey, yeah, like uh, Jacques, Jacques Barrett, Luke Hager, like vouch for, for you, whatever, like come and do a spot. And I got up there and did a spot at the Cecil and I fucking tanked so bad. I remember it just being the worst experience. And I remember getting off stage and just being like, this is fucked. And I remember Dill at one point was like, kind of like, oh, you like, what did you do? Where are you? And I told him about the things like, oh, I heard about that story. And he was really nice after the gig or whatever. And I just kind of went back to my mate's place. I was staying at the, uh, at the Goldie and stuff. And I was just like, fuck, radio's gone and I'm shit at comedy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I was right. just like, what the fuck am I going to do? Worst timing for a bomb. Yeah, and so, sometimes it's out of your control, right? You got a tram going by, and all this is not your. Oh, the tram wasn't going night. by that night. That was all on me. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine it, you were hallucinating. You're like, can someone turn that tram down? <laughs> yeah, that's probably what happened. Yeah, right. No, nah, I was pretty devo. And yeah. then I remember the next day, I got a message from Josh that runs based <clears throat> comedy down there, <clears throat> um, and he was like, uh, "Are you still in the Gold Coast? I got a couple of gigs this weekend if you want to do them." And I was just like, "Oh, yeah, okay." I'm like, this idiot hasn't heard how fucking horrifically I did at the Cecil the other night. And then I went and did some gigs and it was with, um, I think it was with Jacques and, and Heggy and stuff. And there was kind of this cool hangs. And I was after, I was like, oh, well, I'll, st I'll still just do this. And then I just kind of floated around doing mics, moved around a lot because I was still had nowhere to live. And then I had an Adelaide Fringe run coming up that was already paid for. So I was like, I'll just go and do that for like two weeks. And then after that, I ended up getting like a casual radio job in... Uh, Brisbane and once I did that I just started doing gigs there and kind of went into hosting emceeing stuff met the guys at Good Chat and it all kind of snowballed from there over the next I've been there for four years now so yeah oh that's great man yeah. I'm glad you stuck with it dude honestly because it's fucking there's few and far between anyone that I meet that knows you has never has a bad word to say about you well that's very kind you're yeah. asking the wrong people I think yeah problem, sure but... <laughs> they're all fearful they're <laughs> like why do you know you? Do you tell him I said I'll I don't know anybody. it's like I, I think He's had like stuck with it. I think I was like, I just didn't have anything else. <laughs> like it's no, kind of like. Great. Well, you could have gone down a bit of no. resentful path and then just, yeah. you know, just. Oh, mate. A horrible I'm fucking, hang. I'm fucking lemon lime bitters, dude. Yeah. <laughs> mate, anyone who wants to hear the rough shit about the radio industry, I'm more than happy to talk shit on the radio industry. Subscribe to the uh, Comedy Lounge <laughs> These Patreon. Fucking for the... dogs, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> well, man, let's get into uh, Shad and Pete Save the World as well because I know that that's been. Um, I wouldn't say a passion project, but that's been something that you and Peter James have been doing for a long while now. Good mate of yours. And uh, it's, it's, got, it's got legs. I've had mates who have gone onto it and said it's fantastic online. The clips look great. And it's got its own vibe and it's got its own energy and sort of soul to it. So tell me how that came about and, and, and what, what the show is. Uh, so the way, the way the show works is pretty simple. Um, uh, basically, you write down any problems you've got in your life. Nothing's off limits. Nothing's too fucked up. Nothing's too like trivial either. Put it in a bucket on stage. Uh, myself, Pete and a special guest, uh, get very drunk and solve them for you with a 100% success rate guaranteed, we'd never failed. That's the pitch. Uh, <laughs> in terms of how it started, uh, it started in 2019. I got fired uh, at the end of January and then I was in, Br I, by the time I moved to Brisbane after Fringe, Pete was still running his room up in Cairns and like, we're good mates and we're kind of talking a bit and he'd fly me up to do a gig. He's like, do you want to come up um, and do like a spot? And like, we'll just like host at Laughing Heart and hang out, you know, because I was still kind of trying to find my feet in Brisbane. So I was like, I want to come back for a little fun getaway. Um, and I said to him, oh, I don't really have any material that's new. Like, I've just been doing this. And he's like, well, maybe we can come up with a show that can kind of, yeah. we can do that's different. And then it was like, I'm pretty sure it was Pete's idea. But it was like, yeah, like, what if we do this? The first version of it was so complicated. I think we'll laugh about this the other week where we had like the, the post-it notes were color coded and like a green one meant like money or whatever and a, a pink one meant love and they were in different jars and it was just so, like at the time it seemed to make sense. 
But then it eventually was like, no, just chuck them all in the fucking bucket <laughs> yeah. and let's go. And but trust then, the riff. Yeah, yeah. The whole premise just came off the idea of we don't have any material, so let's just do this. And and we met, we actually met at an improv night when I first met him. I was in Cairns, there was no comedy scene, and I went on a date to an improv night and I met Pete there. Oh, right. uh, and then I ended up doing some improv on that show to kind of scratch the itch. And then we were both like, oh, I like doing stand-up. He's like, oh, I like doing stand-up too. So then we just did it in the interval of that. Yeah, and okay. then eventually like went and started, he started a room, I started a room, that kind of stuff. So it kind of leaned back on what we were used to, which was just mucking around. Yeah. And then, yeah, we just did it in Cairns. I think I flew up for like a couple of those. And then we did a couple in Brizzy at Good Chat. And then when COVID happened and everything locked down, I think that's when it really took off because the bucket, Queensland the stayed open. Full. Yeah, Queensland stayed open. The bucket got full. People had to sit there. They couldn't stand up. It's a full and captive audience. And it became like a bit of a cult following in Brizzy. And yeah, it just kind of snowballed. That's fantastic, man. It's a very unique unique thing you're doing with it as well. And uh, check it out. Uh, Pete it's Mich- also incredibly lazy. Let's be real. Like, Pete, well, I mean, you're just self-generating <laughs> material and people love it. Yeah. It's fucking great. Yeah, it's great. It's the best. You've got all the comics are sitting there going like, fucking problem thing. I should have come up with a problem bucket. Come on. Well, I want to I want to touch on something quickly as well. Um, I was very pleased. I was watching the Paramount Plus uh, Inspired Unemployed uh, Prat- Impractical Jokers yeah. um, series. And the final punishment, the worst, the, the series finale, the worst punishment that one of them had to go through was had to do a stand-up set at the uh, comedy yeah. store in Sydney. The great Shad Wicket was emceeing that <laughs> show. I wanted to get a little bit of insight as well because do, how familiar were you with the the rundown of that night was it just you were signed on to mc anyway and they said by the way we're going to be shooting a paramount plus show with this tv personality coming on to do a, a you know a, a five minute set or whatever it was like how across the workings of it were you it was just another gig it was exactly that yeah well <laughs> it was uh i was booked to host and then i got an email i think the day before where it was like a couple of weird things in the lineup for these shows i think they were back to back no it might have been two different nights it was like one, the ABC are doing a ABC Insight or something is doing something on AI and comedy where someone's going to do a stand up set written by AI. So you need to like tell the audience or whatever. Um, and then the other one, they're like the Inspired Unemployed. Uh, yeah, is it Inspired Unemployed. I haven't even seen it. You haven't seen it? No. It's great. You, I've you, got messages you about it. I'm like, fuck, I hope it's good. No, it's really good. I was like, how much of it am I? Like, because I'll, I'll actually I'll tell you this. Fuck, I, it was a red hot night. Like yes. it, it was you an look, you were vibing, good You were night. vibing on It was probably stage. one of the best nights I've had. I mean, I'm not saying this was a bit of a dick, but like it was fucking awesome. Like I'm trying to think of the lineup. I think it was this night. Like Aaron Chen was on it. Like the audience was just that good level of involved. Like they weren't uh, like heckling and shit, but they were just involved in the interactions. Like I saw like Aaron Chen got on and did fucking crowd work for the bit. And I'm like, you never see Chen do just crowd work for a bit. Uh, it was just red hot. It was so much fun. And we were all like, how fun is this? And then the, the order of how we were doing the challenge for the boys, and we all knew it was going to happen, and they were out the back getting ready. He didn't know that yes. Falcon guy. He rocked up out the front. All the boys were in there waiting, and they are all kind of laughing and trying to ask me, like, well, different ways to in- introduce him and, like, do you want to rip on him and blah, blah, blah. And, like, we, I said to him, I was like, it's really good out there. And I was kind of like, it, it could, he could potentially do really well. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Because I was he like, did. it's doing, it's a really good night. And they can hear it. <clears throat> and then um, the where they put him was really fucked because he was opening the second half. So it wasn't like, do the thing at the end of the break, do the break, tell the, because the audience wasn't told he was on. Right. And they weren't told it was a challenge until after. So he gets on in the second half and I'm supposed to intro it like he's a proper act, how exciting here he is. And then he tanks and the energy of this great night completely disappears. Like just, I have to get up afterwards. I've betrayed all of their trust and tell them that it was a prank or whatever. And then had to dig for five, five, six minutes to try and get the energy somewhere up again for the next two acts because the headliner was still to come. Well, you've got to check out the episode, man, because yeah. it, it looks great. You look great in it because it's like, you <laughs> exactly as you described it, you have to get them all back. Um, but I was happy to see you on the show. It was, it was a pleasant surprise. And uh, and yeah, thank you for giving me the insight behind the, the inner workings. Yeah. It seems pretty it's really fun. They're really nice guys. Yeah, no, they seem like good dudes. Well, you're a nice guy too. Oh, thanks, man. I want to... Not uh, bad to look at either, I hear. No, no, you're great to visually take in. <laughs> 
callback. Um, on Instagram, they can find you at Wicked Shad. Wicked uh, Shad. Pete and Shad save the world. Shad and Pete save the world. Shad and Pete. Oh, that little sorry, prick's sorry. not getting his name at the front. Yeah, that's true. My name's let's, at the front. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> Shad and Pete save the world. Uh, Shad, thanks so much for coming on, bro. I appreciate you. No worries, man. Enjoy the shows.